talking about how to build a travel wardrobe for traveling in cold weather. Now the key to packing light is creating a capsule wardrobe. And some of you might think that it's really hard to travel carry on only in the winter, especially because you need to carry a lot of bulky clothing to stay warm. And it is more challenging to travel carry on only in the winter, but it's not impossible. And today I'm gonna to show you some clever hacks and some clever packing tricks with your capsule wardrobe so that way you can choose the right clothing for your trip. When you're traveling somewhere with cold weather, the most important factor of the clothing is actually all in the fabrics. You wanna make sure that the fabrics you choose are the warmest possible. The number one fabric for traveling in cold weather is actually merino wool. And uh, this is always a travel favorite and I have a few pieces here that are in merino wool, including one of my favorite travel dresses. And I'll show it to you in a little bit. But the reason why merino wool is fantastic for traveling in cold weather is that it's lightweight, it packs small, and it also keeps you incredibly warm. So just as a quick example, this is a merino wool dress. And if you have a look, at the actual thickness of the dress. It's not very bulky, but it's gonna be incredibly warm. Versus, this is a chunkier, um, slightly chunkier knit sweater, and it's a lot thicker than this. However, because the, the chunkier fabric is acrylic, and it's not actually a natural fiber like merino wool or cashmere, it's not going to keep the warmth um, in your body as much as the merino wool will. So we'll talk a little bit more about the actual pieces a little bit later on, but I want you to start thinking about the fabric that you're choosing for your travels. Now, likewise, if you're traveling in hot weather, you'd also want to choose natural fabrics like cotton or linen. In this case, for the cold, merino wool is number one. But if you can have a, a wool blend, that's always great. And actually, merino is not as scratchy as regular wool. And it's also a really travel friendly, also in the sense that you can rewear it several times without having to wash it in between. It's odor resistant and it's also moisture wicking. And these are certain properties that when you're traveling in cold weather, you might not think are necessary, but they are not just to pack light, but also to keep you warmer when it's colder outside. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you're traveling in cold weather is what type of travel will you be doing? Will you be spending an extended period of time outdoors? Will you be in a coach bus on a tour visiting different cities in Europe? Or will you be outdoors exploring the wilderness. All of these things are factors in what you need to bring and how you need to dress. Obviously, and I'm sure you've heard about it before, but traveling in colder weather requires that you wear layers. I'm gonna show you how to layer different items of clothing and also exactly which are the best ones that you can choose, which are the best bottoms, the best tops, and also the best dresses, because surprisingly, dresses are absolutely fantastic for travel even in cold weather. Another reason why it's important for you to keep in mind what activities you're gonna be doing in the cold weather is that sometimes, even though it might be cold outside, if you're walking briskly or if you're walking outdoors but then going inside, then you actually might not need as many warm layers as you might think because, for example, in England, while it may be cold outdoors, when you're getting into the tube or you're going indoors, the heater is so strong inside that you quickly want to take your layers off, and that's a lot to carry on and off. Likewise, if you're on a coach bus tour, then you're going to spend a lot of your time in the bus, so you might not need as heavy as a coat as you might think. But we'll also discuss the type of coats that are ideal for cold weather. So let's get started. First, we're going to talk about the types of pants that you're going to wear on your bottom. And now I'm going to show you various different options. I want you to choose whatever is most comfortable to you. If you don't own a pair of dark blue jeans, wear the color of jeans that you do have. And this might be the color story that I've chosen in this capsule, but it doesn't have to be yours. 
The most important thing to keep in mind is for you to choose items that can mix and match in neutral colors and in prints and shades of colors that match with those neutrals. But it doesn't have to be all black. In fact, here I've chosen black, gray, blue, ivory, and various variations of those shades. But I haven't chosen these colors because I'm traveling. I've actually chosen these colors because I like them. I like to dress in black, white, ivory, gray, and blue. So make sure that when you're choosing your color story, choose a color story that you like, things that you'd wear at home, things that you feel comfortable wearing as well. So with regards to the pants, the very first pair of pants that you wanna to plan to bring on a trip for the winter is a pair of jeans. So in this case, I've chosen a pair of blue jeans. And the reason I've, I've chosen a pair of dark blue jeans is because it's a neutral color and you might actually find dark blue being recommended as a good pair of jean colors that you can wear practically anywhere. And that's really because it's sort of a classic piece. It's not because everyone in the destination is going to wear dark blue or black. It's just because it's something that's going to transcend trends and color, you know, popular colors of the moment. So it's kind of a good go-to color. It's never really going to go out of style. And in the winter, a nice dark blue jean is really classic. It could look a bit dressier. You could dress it up, wear it casually, and it's also going to keep you warm in the cold. Now, let's be clear. You don't want to wear jeans if you're going to be spending time hiking in the wilderness. Of course, that's not the type of trip we're talking about here. This is more of a city trip or going to a destination that doesn't require you to be hiking in the outdoors. In that case, you should definitely have more outdoor appropriate clothing. But the basic principles of the capsule wardrobe are still the same. So remember to apply these ideas for the type of activities that you'll be doing on your trip. So I've also chosen another pair of trousers, a pair of pants. In this case, it's a dark gray. Now, a popular option for many female travelers is a black knit pant, not a legging. I think a lot of times we think of leggings as something really great for travel, and they are, but not to be worn as pants. They're great for layers. And in this case, I like having a nice neutral color like a gray. This particular pant works well because it'll mix and match with everything. It also washes easily. It wicks away moisture, which is great if it's raining or if you're going to have a quick, you know, play on the snow, the little snow angel. I've used it before. And because it's a slightly thinner fabric, this is good for an active pan if you're going to be doing some light outdoor activities, day trips, maybe a couple of hours. I'm not talking about multi-day hikes. But in the winter, you can also layer tights or leggings or thermals underneath the pants to stay warmer. And we'll talk a little bit more about thermals later on. Just to recap, really when you're traveling in the winter or pretty much any other time, two bottoms sometimes is all you need. Probably no more than three, definitely no more than four. The winter tends to be a little bit more streamlined and easy because you can kind of just wear the same pants and rotate them. And guess what? When you're traveling in the winter, you're probably gonna have a coat on and it's gonna be zipped up. So nobody's even gonna see your tops. So getting, it's easier to get away with rewearing clothing a lot more often. But one of the secrets to traveling light is to actually rewear clothing. Now, it's a little bit easier to rewear clothes when it's colder weather than when it's hot. Because when it's hot and humid, you know, your clothing might be a little bit uncomfortable to rewear more than once without washing. But in the winter, you're not gonna be sweating as much. And also, you'll, because you'll be covered with a jacket for the most part, and you won't see what's, what you're wearing underneath, then it's easier to get away with wearing the same thing over and over. But it doesn't mean that you have to have a boring color palette or it has to be all neutral. So choose things that make sense for you. But as mentioned, a jean or one or two pairs of jeans, you can get away with wearing the same exact pair or just two pairs the entire trip. And just again, mix them and match them with everything else. In case you need something a little bit dressier, then, or you like wearing dresses and skirts, a skirt's a great option to wear as a bottom as well. And like dresses, what you'll do is if it's colder, you'll layer them with leggings or thermals underneath and tights as well. 
So this is going to be a great way for you to have an option to dress up in the evenings. You can simply pair a skirt with one of your sweaters or a nice blouse and flats or some boots as well with that. So great option if you need some dressier choices for your winter trips. You can also wear it in the day as well. When it comes to winter for bottoms, 100% a pair of jeans is really all you need if you're not going to be hiking in the wilderness, if it's going to be, you know, an average trip. And then if you'd like a secondary piece, choose another color. So don't make sure that you just don't have two pairs of black pants or two pairs of blue pants. Always try to choose two different colors. That way you can create a little bit of a difference when it comes to your outfits. And remember, pants are easy to rewear, so you don't have to worry about washing them. A quick note, as I was mentioning previously, rewearing your clothing is one of the easiest ways to travel light. So on a winter trip, while you can get away with rewearing stuff more often, if you do have a chance to do laundry about once per week for longer trips, that's the idea. But with this capsule wardrobe, it would allow you to have a unique outfit every single day for an entire week. However, if you did, if you were traveling longer than a week, then either do laundry once a week or you would just rewear a few of these pieces. I've chosen fabric so it would allow you to do so, like merino wool, where it won't absorb scents and it'll be easy to rewear without a problem. Now that we've reviewed the bottoms for the cold weather travel capsule wardrobe, now let's look at the tops. Now the tops that I've chosen here are all, again, colors that I like and also easily reworn, and they mix and match with all the bottoms. Ultimately, that's one of the key components of creating a capsule wardrobe. Everything has to mix and match, and we'll show you how that works in a little bit. The first item I'm gonna show you with the tops that I've chosen is a plain black merino wool light sweater. Now, I always like to have one classic top, whether it's just a plain black top, because I like wearing black, not because you have to wear black, but I like to have one piece that can kind of just, it's a go-to piece. It could look dressier, it could look more casual, and in this case, it's a very lightweight item that can either be worn alone, maybe paired with a skirt, paired with the slack, or with jeans, jewelry, and flats, and that would be a nice dressier look, or I could even wear it underneath one of these other items to provide additional warmth. Now it's merino wool, so that's definitely one of our favorite fabrics to stay warm, but this would be a great option for something that you could wear on a slightly less cold day, so a moderate winter day. I also have another 100% merino wool sweater in my options. This is one of my all-time favorites because I like the zipper details. And this is just, it's a neutral color it's sort of a light pink, but because of the fabric, it keeps me very warm. And th this will very easily mix and match with all the pieces, with all of our bottoms, while keeping me warm at the same time. And now I mentioned that merino wool is very good for the winter, but one of the things to keep in mind is that the reason why it's particularly good is because it wicks away the moisture from your skin, keeping you cool. So when you're walking around sightseeing, you know, if you're covered up in a lot of layers, probably work up a little bit of a sweat, um, even though it might be cold outside when you're all bundled up. The merino wool will actually repel the moisture from your skin and in doing so, allow the top layers, your coats, to actually insulate the warmth. If it was another fabric like cotton, for example, it would actually absorb the moisture from your skin. And even if you have an amazingly warm coat on the top, you're still gonna feel cold inside because that moisture is stuck against your body. It's also helpful in, in keeping you healthy and avoiding you from getting sick as well because you're not walking around with moisture and right next to your skin. So this is also a, another great option for me. I like it, it's a nice, again, I mentioned that Merino is a nice thin but very warm fabric. I've got two other sweaters in these options. And these aren't 100% merino, but they're, they, but they're actually equally as warm. This one is actually acrylic. One downside of actually having a sweater like this is that it is bulkier. If you look at the thickness, it is bulkier, which means it's gonna avoid keeping you in the carry-on only zone. What I might do is actually take 
only a couple of sweaters instead of several because as I mentioned before if you have your jacket closed most people can't see what you're wearing underneath anyway but right now I want to show you the maximum number of things that you can bring in a capsule and then you can decide if you want to remove a few pieces or add a few as well. Gray is actually also one of my favorite colors to wear year-round. I think it's an awesome neutral and some classic stripes. Now this is a mixture of I think it's a synthetic plus also I think it's 83 percent wool so it's a very warm sweater. It's actually one of my favorites. All the items that you see here, it's actually part of my everyday winter capsule wardrobe. It's really important to carry things that you like to wear, that you feel comfortable wearing, and not wear things that you've never worn before or things that aren't particularly your style. You see a lot of basics here, a lot of neutrals, but don't necessarily have to take a striped sweater. Bring things that you have in your closet or when you go shopping that you like to draw your attention. Another reason why I like having a basic like this is that you can easily layer it underneath another sweater in case you are cold. And that's really where smart packing really comes in for the winter weather. It's when you can layer a two sweaters like this. And having two merino sweaters on top of each other is actually going to be a lot warmer than three bulky acrylic sweaters, believe it or not. So sometimes it's worth the effort, especially if you're a frequent flyer and you travel a lot. Investing in a couple of these pieces, even if it was just two and you wore them every single day and underneath your jacket and nobody saw what they were, they're well worth the investment. Or take advantage of the end of the season sales. That's when I do my buying. Last but not least, I always like to pack a long sleeve blouse as well when I do travel. And again, maybe you might need more blouses, more dressier items. But in this case, I like to have, assuming that you're just going sightseeing, having only, for the most part, casual dinners, I like to have at least one blouse where I could dress it up. I could pair it with a skirt or wear it with jeans, but dress it up with flats and jewelry. It's something that's just a little bit nicer when you need to dress up. So far I've shown you three bottoms and five tops. And doing travel fashion math, three times five is 15, which means just with these eight pieces of clothing, you already have 15 outfits. That's two weeks worth of travel. And basically the way I figured that out is if you mix and match each of these tops with each of these bottoms, then you have 15 unique looks. Now I'm gonna review that with you a little bit more in detail later on, but again, if you don't feel comfortable re-wearing the items without washing them, you'd have one, two, three, four, five days with, you only re-wear your bottoms, so you have five days so far for a long weekend, for example. And then if you had a longer period of time, like a week, all you would do is bring two more tops or two dresses like we have here. The idea is that you have at least a unique dress or top for seven days because whether you're traveling for one week one month or one year all you need is a week's worth of clothing and then you do laundry at the end of that or if you're traveling for eight days and you bring an extra item now let's look at the dresses that we've chosen for cold weather travel dresses are actually fantastic for travel they're very versatile they're comfortable and when you layer them they can be warm in the winter too in this case, I have one of my very favorite travel dresses. It's merino wool. It's by one of my favorite brands, Ibex. And it actually almost made me overpack for Paris because I felt so comfortable and warm in this dress paired with tights, boots, and a jacket that I could have worn this dress every single day of the entire trip for a week and not care that I was wearing the same exact thing. That's the great thing about merino, and that's the great thing about wearing something that you actually like and enjoy. Also, because it's just a basic black dress, it's also a little bit dressier as well, and it doesn't really stand out or draw any attention to itself. If you happen to stain a little bit of something on it in the, in the winter, then that's okay. So I like to always have a little black dress, and if for you, maybe black isn't your color. Like I said before, I love wearing black and neutrals, but if your color is maybe a brown, if you like maroon, if you like royal blue, whatever your color is, that's your version of a little black dress, and that's okay. For me, this one absolutely works, and I can wear this every single day.
The next dress that I have, it's actually also a merino wool dress by Ibex. It is a gray dress, very similar to that one. And I've actually, what I've done because I'm five foot two, I've actually had these dresses alt, um, altered. So they're shorter and their arms have been shortened as well. So that way it's more of a, a fit in length that I feel a bit more fun and even flirty in, which is another reason why I really like the dresses because I made them a little bit more tailored to suit me. And like the black dress, the gray is fantastic neutral. I, I'm a big fan of gray for traveling throughout the year, darker in the cold weather, lighter in the warm weather. It has the same types of properties as the, the black one, so it's something you can easily rewear. If you wanted to be an ultra minimalist and have a feminine travel wardrobe as well, you could literally just buy a couple of merino wool dresses and just change them and wear them out you know, get different colors and that's all you need. You could wear, literally wear merino wool for weeks. I know one girl wore, wore her merino wool top in Bali for two weeks without washing it. That's basically how merino wool works. So ideally, you wanna air it out at the end of the day after every use. Now we've seen how a 10-piece capsule wardrobe can actually provide not only seven days worth of unique outfits, but even more. So we've got five tops, three bottoms, and two dresses. That's enough for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. And then you just mix and match your bottoms with the tops. Now, one of the other great things about choosing to travel with a neutral dress is that you can actually layer other things on top of it, using it as a skirt. For example, if I have this long sleeve black dress, I can very easily layer this striped sweater over it, and now it looks like I'm wearing a black skirt underneath a, the striped sweater, instead of it just being a plain black dress. Likewise, I could do this with any of the other tops, not the blouse, but probably just the, the sweaters, just like this. And you would never even really, you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell that you actually don't have a skirt underneath that you have just a sweater. So this is one of my favorite hacks for the winter. I mentioned that there are a couple of important factors when it comes to traveling with less clothing, but having the right clothing. One is the fabric, in this case, merino wool. Two, it's rewearing your clothing or washing it every week or so. And the third is in the winter, bring thermals. Now, this also depends on the destination where you're going, but if you're looking at 35 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius or below, now you also wanna bring a pair of thermals. In this case, I always travel in colder weather. I have a pair of thermals, and of course, guess what fabric they are? Merino wool. This guarantees that I'm gonna be warm no matter what, because there's nothing worse than feeling cold and again, without the bulk. I have a long sleeve merino wool top, and I also have merino wool thermal bottoms that I can wear underneath my jeans. This is an example of the thermal bottoms, and unfortunately, usually, usually thermals are a bit too thin, and maybe not they don't have the right fit, I suppose, to wear them as tights or leggings on their own but they're really good to wear them underneath other pants, like my, um, the other trousers I showed you. As you can see, they're really thin, but because they are merino wool, they'll help to keep you warm. And again, the key thing is, they'll also wick away the moisture from your skin, keeping you warm. Now, another type of thermal that is absolutely excellent, and it's even thinner than merino wool, is silk thermals. Now, silk thermals are extremely thin. They're actually even see-through. You'd never think that they keep you warm, but, but this is a good option to also have a light layer underneath your other clothing that's very thin and very minimal, but helps to insulate the warmth. Silk like merino will also keep you warm without the bulk and it'll help to wick away the moisture from your skin. If you're going to a very cold climate, or then you could even layer your silk underneath your merino, underneath a pair of jeans if you needed to. But another option is to actually layer tights. Tights are a really good option to wear underneath your dresses or underneath your pants as well. 
This helps to keep you warm. It also it keeps your legs warm. And if you don't want to carry the thermal bottoms as well, I would definitely add a pair of tights if you're going to be wearing dresses. If you're not having any dresses, if you're not wearing dresses, then bring along the thermal bottoms. You may or may not need both in your suitcase, but I'm giving you a few different options. So you could either have the knit tights, like these, they're a little bit thicker, or you can also bring just a pair of black regular pantyhose to wear underneath dresses or skirts and pair them with your boots, your flats. And this is a really good option when you want to ha have a dressier look, but if you want to have the option of the dressier look and just something more casual that's knit, you can wear these together. That's one of the tricks so that you can actually wear these underneath the knit ones to stay warmer during the day when you're wearing a dress. So that's a great way to stay warm, look feminine, and avoid the bulk. As I showed you with the thermal bottoms, if it's very cold, we can layer a silk thermal like this underneath a merino wool thermal that's a little bit thicker. And then normally, merino wool, a thermal on its own, isn't necessarily going to keep you warm. This is just an underlayer. But if you happen to come across a more moderate day, let's say you're traveling somewhere where it's cold, but it's going to be a slightly milder day, then you could just wear this on its own and it's going to keep you at a good temperature. That's another reason why I like my thermals to be a color like gray or a black that looks like a regular top. Because if you have a striped thermal top, for example, or one with a print, it might not be able to double up as a regular top as well. Now, if it's really cold, how I'm gonna layer this is the silk, the merino, and the sweater. And now we're really starting to layer strategically for cold weather. This combination on its own is enough to keep you incredibly warm. If the silk plus the merino might be a bit of overkill, then you can just choose silk or merino. If I have to choose one, I'll usually go with the merino if I know it's gonna be very cold, but if I need to be extra warm, then I'll, I'll have both. So now I've got three layers of really warm fabric on top. And of course, you're gonna be placing your coat or your jacket on top of all of this. So you're really gonna be staying warm, not to mention your outer layers as well. This is how to strategically layer your clothing to stay warm in the winter. Similar to the tops, you can also layer underneath your pants. You can have the tights, or you can also layer the merino wool and or silk tights as well so that you're warm underneath. To be honest with you, I think that a lot of times you might find that unless you're in arctic cold that your legs might not be as cold as your top. So you might not even need the thermals underneath. It just depends on the cold. But remember, you always should check the weather before you leave. Don't just assume a destination is going to be extremely cold or extremely warm. Check the forecast and also check the daytime forecast versus the nighttime forecast because you might find that during the day there's sunshine and as soon as the sun goes away, it's gonna feel really cold. For example, in a cold destination, let's say Peru, Peru is high, is high altitude. So during the day when the sun's out, it feels warm even though the temperature might be only 55 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit or I suppose 14 to 17 degrees Celsius. But as soon as the sun goes down, you feel the cold because there's no warmth from the sun at all to keep you warm. So these are things for you to be aware of. Also look at the humidity levels and the wind, especially in cold destinations. The wind is really important because it might only be 40 degrees, maybe 50 degrees, but if there's high winds, it's gonna feel a lot colder. So keep that in mind. Ideally, I always recommend that you bring two outer layers that you can wear together. In this case, I'm gonna show you two different jacket slash coat options because not all trips are the same. One of the warmest winter jackets that you could possibly wear is a down jacket. A down jacket is incredibly warm. It packs very light if you need to pack it. You could even use it as a travel pillow on the plane or to keep you warm. It's very cozy and it's quite common to see them in cold destinations as well. A black one just looks like a classic black jacket. It's really unassuming, 
but you have to also think about what your pictures are going to look like if you want to have every single picture with a black jacket in the cold destinations. Because remember, if it's cold, then you'll be wearing a jacket over everything. So it doesn't matter what you've got underneath. Another option for traveling in a cold destination, especially if you're going to be visiting a city where you don't expect snow or it'll be a moderate climate, depending on your activities, is just a regular coat. Something that can mix and match with everything. And then when you're choosing a coat, think about also the length of it. Depending on how cold it is, it might be essential for you to have coverage up down to your legs. If it's less cold, it might be fine for you to have coverage to your hips. If it's going to be snowing, if you're going to Russia in the winter, then you probably want a long coat. Definitely a down jacket. This is probably more appropriate for not zero degrees, not 35 degrees weather. Although if there's no wind and there's no rain, then it would be okay because you've got the other layers underneath. I've worn it together. Now when it comes to choosing a color for a coat, then you have the option to choose a neutral like gray. Personally, I love neutrals and I love gray. But what you could also do is you could have chosen a nice red color or a nice blue color, even yellow, something to add life into the neutral color palette. But if you've chosen a very lively color palette, then go for a neutral so it can mix and match with every single thing. We've got 10 pieces in our capsule and the tight and thermals and jackets, I don't include them in the 10 clothing items. These are all extras because we might need one or two jackets, we might need one or two thermals, or you might not need any thermals at all. You have your base clothing, and then anything extra is you can you know add a few pieces or remove them as needed. Now, remember that when you're going to be on the plane, your travel outfit is going to be one of these pieces. So I do recommend though that you do pack your suitcase with your flight outfit minus your coat included, just to make sure that everything fits on the way back. Remember to wear your bulkiest items on the plane, even though you'll include them in your suitcase test packing run, because not only will they keep you warm, but they'll also help you minimize the space in your suitcase so you can travel with a smaller suitcase. You'll also want to use packing cubes and compression sacks to try to keep things down, and we've got a lot of information about packing organizers and how to squish down your clothing on Travel Fashion Girl. For example, if you were traveling with this knit sweater and the pair of jeans or the pair of pants, then now all you need to pack is this. So you won't have as many bulky items in your suitcase. Likewise, whatever coat you do choose, you don't want to bring it in your suitcase. You also want to wear it onto the plane. So if you decide to bring this coat, you're wearing this outfit on the plane, this will be packed. And now you might not want to bring these two coats unless there's space for both or unless you need both. Usually it depends on the type of trip. You'll only need one or the other. So if you were bringing this coat, you'd be packing this and wearing this on the plane. Now you might think maybe I don't want to buy merino wool, but I still want to have use the clothing that I currently use for winter. And that's completely fine. You don't have to travel carry-on only, just to use the basic principles shown in these ideas to mix and match, just so you don't have to bring a huge suitcase. It's really just about creating a practical travel wardrobe that'll be high functioning for you. It'll make your life a lot easier when you're traveling and you don't have to think, what am I going to wear? This will already be all planned for you. So don't worry if it's not carry-on only. Just take what you can, and if you want to definitely travel carry-on only, then what I would do is I would travel without this piece, and I would only bring without this dress, and probably without the skirt. So my capsule, if I really wanted to downsize, would be to bring two bottoms, two, two sweaters, one lighter sweater, one long sleeve top, and then my merino wool dress. So in total we have one, two, three, four, five tops and two bottoms. That's seven pieces, five tops times two bottoms, travel fashion math is 14 outfits. So I still have various 
which outfits I can change and mix and match. You could even take it down to less than that. Remember, if, it's, if you're going to be somewhere cold, your jacket counts more than your clothing. If you want to bring two colored down jackets instead, you could do that as well because that's what everybody's going to see on the outside anyway. So you could probably even bring one or two, so I'd probably maybe skip, I don't know, I like them all. I always rewear that one. Take that out. And you could probably take this one out and have those. So now you have two bottoms, two sweaters, one dress. The dress, like I said, I could wear this every day for a week because it's so comfortable and warm. But for colder days, I definitely want to layer my, my pieces together. I could even wear these two. I could wear them together if I wanted to stay warm. And then if I was going to be wearing my jacket on top and having a thermal underneath, again, if that's going to stay closed, you could definitely downsize as well. So different ideas, apply them to your own style, your own preferences. If you're a dress girl, then you can just bring more dresses. If you don't like to wear, you know, dresses and don't pack them at all, bring more sweaters, remove this one. bring more tops. If you want to have a different top every single day of the week, pack one for every single day of the week, then change it out the following week. Or in this case, I could wear these twice in one week and I'd still have unique looks because it'd have different bottoms as well. And when you're traveling, don't worry, people aren't paying as much attention to you as you might think. So you'll be okay. Try not to stress too much about it. When you're choosing your shoes for travel, I always recommend you bring a minimum of two and a maximum of three. And when you're traveling in winter, usually you want to focus your shoes on the type of destination where you're going to be going, the weather, and your activities. But always, 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 comfort is number one. In the winter, we tend to encounter some rain, maybe even some snow. So if that's the case, then you want to bring some waterproof shoes. Doesn't mean rubber rain boots, a lot of leather, full leather, and specially made leather looking shoes are actually water resistant or waterproof as well and those could serve as your sightseeing shoes try to look for brands that are comfort brands We've got variety of the more stylish comfort shoe options on travel fashion girl but also make sure that that pair of boots can mix and match with everything usually if you if i was just going to travel with one pair i'd always choose the a pair of boots because it's gonna, you know, sometimes they're easier to dress up. You can wear them in the day. You can wear some of them at night. And also you're gonna be ready for the weather. If you're going to be traveling in the winter time and maybe it's not gonna be snowing, it's only gonna be raining a minimal amount, then a pair of sneakers might be something that you'd wanna go. And the sneakers that you take, it could be, you know, Superga style, slip-ons, running shoes, Whatever is true to your style, if you wear a certain type of shoe at home in the winter time, that's what you should also consider wearing during the, your trip as well. Now for dressier times in the cold weather, you either would wear, again, your boot, depending on the style, or you could wear a ballet flat. Heels, depending, you know, if you're gonna be in the rain or snow, you might not wanna be walking around in heels. So ballet flats tend to be a good option. Disclaimer though, ballet flats are usually flat, so they don't offer a lot of support for long sightseeing days. We don't recommend them for sightseeing shoes. We recommend that you either pack a comfortable boot or you pack a pair of comfortable sneakers of some sort, the ones that best suit your style, and save the ballet flats for dressier times. Now, just because you need to pack neutral shoes doesn't mean they need to be black shoes. In fact, the most neutral color is actually a tan shoe. And a tan shoe goes with a variety of different color palettes, whether it's black, gray, taupe, ivory, maroon, whatever your neutral color palette is, even navy, it goes really well with a pair of tan or brown type boots or shoes, sandals if you're traveling in, the hot, in hot weather. It's just a very versatile color. It also adds a little bit of style too. Now, as I mentioned before, the ideal shoe for the winter is a boot. In this case, I love an ankle boot if you're not gonna be experiencing a heavy snow or snowy, regular snowy conditions. It's really good for just a general cold weather travel, um, not below freezing. This is great when there's mild rain, not heavy rainstorms, because if you don't bring a tall boot, it actually saves space they're easier to wear, and they're also stylish as well. A boot like this one is easily dressed up. It's just a regular leather ankle boot. You can wear it with the dress and tights. 
You can wear it with jeans, you can wear it with any trousers. It has a relatively flat heel, which is what you should be looking for when you're traveling for a shoe. And also, obviously, if it's comfortable for you for long hours. Now, a boot like this one is more of, of a comfort boot. This is also a waterproof boot as well. It's by Tiva, and it's a popular travel fashion girl choice. A lot of our readers love this one as their top boot, waterproof boot pick, because it's a relatively stylish boot. It has a buckle detail. It's also comfortable, plus it also has a rubber sole that's very strong and durable, which is absolutely key. If you're gonna be ex experiencing snow, slate, or rain, this actually makes more sense. If you're in a snowstorm though, you might wanna choose the, um, the taller boot version. There's a taller version of these. You definitely don't wanna spend a lot of time sightseeing in shoes that are gonna get wet because that's not gonna be comfortable for you. You do wanna have quality shoes too because if they're not very good, they can fall apart and I have to say, experience <laughs> has taught me to always have good quality boots in the rain. Another option when it's gonna be cooler weather but not heavy snow conditions is a sneaker. You can wear whatever sneaker suits your style. I like a gray color because it matches with everything, but in this case it could be a black one or um, this one is canvas, but if you expect for there to be a lot of rain, you might want a leather sneaker instead. For a dressier option, the easiest choice is a pair of ballet flats. Again, they're not your sightseeing shoe. They can be if you don't require a lot of support, but we usually recommend them if you'd like something to dress up your outfit. A foldable ballet flat's always popular. These are from Yossi Samra. It's a fun little piece and they're really affordable and they've got a lot of great prints. Now this is incredibly important. Do not forget your outer layers. They're gonna make all the difference in the world. If it's cold outside, your hat, your scarf, and your gloves are absolutely gonna save you from freezing, I promise. So make sure that you bring one set that can mix and match with all of your clothing. Showing you how to choose the best pieces for cold weather travel. Now let's mix and match them. Remember, a pair of jeans goes with absolutely everything. Wear a classic black sweater with them. Add the striped sweater or wear this over the black sweater. You've got my favorite zippered <laughs> light pink beige taupe, not sure what color it is, a gray sweater. And of course, you could dress the jeans up with a nice blouse, either tucked in or worn outside of the jeans. But if you tuck it in and wear a nice belt, just a nice thin belt, then it'll create a more polished appearance and just add some fine jewelry. Now you just repeat those exact things with the other bottoms. But you saw just with one pair of jeans, if we had five tops and just one pair of jeans, you could have a different outfit every single day. Nobody's probably gonna notice what your jeans are. So it's pretty easy if you only wanted to pack one pair of jeans or just wear them onto the plane. But because we have other bottoms, we can also mix and match the rest of the bottoms with these tops to create five additional outfits. Now between the two pants and the five tops, you'd have enough for 10 different outfits. Or if you wanted to, if you were traveling for five days, you would just have to wear the five tops and then wear the two bottoms every other day. Now, but we have a skirt, so the skirt, all we'd have to do is pair the nice black top. You can tuck that in for a nice clean look and put a belt on top or if you feel more comfortable, you can wear it on the outside, but tucking the top in creates a more polished appearance. Now don't forget, if you don't want to bring a skirt, you could also travel with your dress and layer a sweater over your dress to make it act as a skirt. And voila, you have more outfits. Now, of course, if you're traveling in cold weather, don't forget your socks. Guess what kind? Always recommend a merino wool blend because merino wool is rewearable. Re You'll need less socks to bring on your trip as well. So don't forget to pack a few merino wool socks. And what if travelers like to do as a hack is 
they'll bring one warm pair of wool socks that's that's always on the outside and they actually wear thinner sock liners on the inside so all they have to do is switch out the sock liners and just have that one thicker or like the one warmer sock on the inside so that's a bit of a, of a bit of a hack for you right there so you don't have to worry about bringing seven socks on a one week trip just bring a couple or worst case like with underwear they're smaller so you can easily hand wash them in the sink and let them air dry overnight so that's a tip to help you downsize even further. Hopefully you enjoyed these tips on packing light and creating a capsule wardrobe for cold weather travels. Again, it's a bit more challenging and yes, it's a bit trickier to travel carry on only, but no, you don't have to wear all black and you can travel light. Thank you so much. For more tips, please visit Travel Fashion Girl. See you there.